Hey everybody, welcome back to Mineral Live. And here we are in front of the uh, Maki again. And uh, today, uh, Ben is going to explain a couple of things to me. Um, I don't know what a off-board charging uh, module <laughs> is, but we're gonna find out. So uh, Ben, uh, why don't you jump right into the magic box that I couldn't figure out. All right, so in, <coughs> in your previous video, Sandy, we were talking about this box here. We weren't real sure what it is. Uh, just had a, the do not drop statement on it, which is pretty standard for a lot of these, uh, the modules in here, because the circuit board is going to be the first thing that breaks inside of the box. Mm. So this is what Ford is calling their off-board charge controller. And what this does is it works with the DC fast charging system. Mm. So when you go to an Electrify America <clears> station <throat> and you plug in the DC fast charger, uh, that connects straight to the battery. So the high voltage wires go straight to the battery. Um, and then through that, uh, through that charge, they are using some power line communication. So there's some, uh, some sort of modulation that's going on at the voltage. So it's going to be between 200 and 600 volts. And they'll have less than a percent where the voltage will go up and down. Something in the battery is monitoring that. And there's a decoder ring basically in there that is gathering that information. And that is sent up to this control module. Hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I noticed that it's got connectors to it. So is that for CAN bus or? It is doing CAN and LIN communication. Oh, really? It's communicating with the entire vehicle. We haven't figured out everything that it's talking to at this point, <clears throat> um, but we know that it is monitoring the battery and the voltage. We're pretty sure that it's going to be also controlling the, uh, the thermal systems. So it'll have temperature monitoring on the battery, and then it'll be able to turn, turn on and turn off any heating or cooling that would need to happen hmm. uh, to, to help with the charging. So why haven't we seen one of these things before? And I mean, normally I would have thought that this would have been in the uh, in the converter um or at least around the converter this one here is just sticking up you know like uh i don't know uh it's a very odd <laughs> odd location for it i'm wondering why any yes. any ideas um we've got a couple of <coughs> ideas um we think that this is something that let me back up just a second for to use electrify america you are communicating with the charge port so or with the charger so every vehicle that works with Electrify America has this somewhere. Um, like you said, it's probably integrated somewhere else. We think what Ford might be doing here, uh, they're going to be selling this in Europe. They don't have the same Electrify America system. They don't have the same communication network. So it might be modular to be able to take this off and replace it with another piece. Uh, hmm. They may have had some packaging issues inside the battery control module or in inside the converter and had to plop it on top. Um, until we open up those boxes, though, we're not real sure what's going on inside of them. Hmm. So it's still, still to be determined why it's, why it's its own module and standing there. Uh, <clears throat> this is something, again, I, I'm a big fan of, of, uh, of making things integrated mm -hmm. and making it easier for the product to, uh, to be put together. And quite frankly, I don't understand why that box, first off, I don't understand why it has to be vertical, but Anyway, I don't understand why the cards in there can't be somewhere else because if I'm making one in Europe, mm -hmm. I'm definitely, I, I'm not going to be uh, shipping this, stiff, this stuff from, uh, from the United States. I mean, it's going to be made in Europe, uh, probably made in China. But I, I, don't, I don't really quite get it, but uh, I'm sure that Ford's it's, got some kind of reason. If somebody at Ford wants to uh, basically tell us what the reason is, be happy as a clam to find that out. So, uh, so anyway, I also heard about the, uh, the doors. So, yeah, so uh, we've been in our process of tearing it down. We have the hood off, as you can see, and we also have the four doors off. Yeah. The first door that we took off was the driver door. Uh, then we took off the other three doors. There was no issue opening any of the other doors. They're electronically controlled with the push buttons. Um, but when we went to lift the hatch afterwards, the hatch wouldn't work anymore. Uh, we tried the push button on the hatch, we tried the push button on the key fob, and we tried swiping our feet underneath of it, and the hatch wouldn't work. So we figured out we had to put the driver door back on to get the hatch to work. So the, there's the, either power that's running through uh, the driver door or the control module in the driver door uh, controls the hatch, because now the power lift gate won't work at all anymore either. So any of the, the strut assists are not working. It's all manual. So we've, we got it open, we, 
we taped up the, uh, the latch so we couldn't accidentally shut it. But so far, that's all that really isn't working. Uh, we can still get in, we can turn it on. We've been able to drive it back and forth in the shop to reposition it for different things. It gives you all sorts of warnings that you're missing. Doors aren't <laughs> shut, hood isn't <laughs> shut. You've got all sorts of ADAS issues because we've taken cameras off of uh, the rear yeah. view mirrors, but it still drives around. Now, um, in the olden days, they used to say, uh, takes a licking and still keeps ticking. <laughs> So, uh, so anyway, I, I guess we're going to take it outside and yeah. uh, drive around a little bit. So, um, or you are, uh, but uh, but at the end of the day, um, it's kind of amazing. Very, very seldom do you have a serial kind of a situation where you would go from this door to that door with power and communication. It's very, it's truly unusual. I, I've never seen it before. It must have some 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 lawyer had <laughs> must have had some kind of a, a an issue with something. So uh, I'm thinking that if the door's not on here, I, I don't I don't understand. Yeah. So because it's yeah, it, it's it not the other it's to not me. the other three doors. It's <clears throat> yeah. only the hatch that it's a, that it affects. Well, this is the uh, this is the kind of thing that uh, that uh, is is uh, is always a mystery. There's always a couple of mysteries, and this has got to be one of them. So anyway, I think uh, I think Ben, if you could, uh, maybe you might want to. Jump in there and um, and have Zach uh, uh, take your picture or give a video <laughs> right. as you're going around the uh, driveway. So um, anyway, I'll let you guys uh, uh, do your thing, and then you can come back and tell me how, what it's like to drive <laughs> to drive like when I've got my Jeep doors off. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> just in case that's connected to the ignition. <laughs> Let's just make sure we can make it all work. So uh, I'll let you guys jump in and uh, and take it off and um, you'll get a chance to see that. Thanks for tuning in to Monroe Live. Uh, we'll see you again in a, in a little bit with uh, more removed from, uh, from the vehicle. Thanks a lot, bye. So it tells me that the vehicle's on and it goes through its list of errors. There's a vehicle driver door jar, passenger door jar, hoods ajar. The rear left door is ajar, the rear right door is ajar, the lift gate is ajar, all this stuff isn't even on the vehicle anymore. There's a blind spot system failure and a cross traffic system failure, and I can't lock the back doors with the child safety locks anymore, so we can't put Sandy in the back again and shut the door. Uh, so there are a lot of errors just because we've taken stuff off. We're gonna keep doing this as we tear down more of the vehicle to see how much stuff we can get out of here uh, and still get it to run. Uh, Objective is to be sitting here on a five gallon bucket and uh, drive around with no seats, no interior and see if we can do that. See how, see how well it works. So we'll, we'll head outside and see if we're in limp mode. Uh, if we're limited to five miles an hour, if we can go a little bit faster than that. And we'll start heading that way now. <laughs> 